The next toxicity that we're going to just touch on, and I don't think I'm going to be touching on this, or I'm not going to be discussing it a huge amount because it goes well over my head. Um, and I will actually provide the um, original, if you like, well, there's, there's an awful lot of information from doctors and such like around about all of these toxicities um, anyway. So they're not, they're public information, they're public domain information the reports and research and everything are all out there. But this next particular one um, is called opportunistic tos toxicity. Um, and now I don't proclaim, I'm not a scientist, and therefore I recommend that you actually do your own research on this. But my understanding of this, and as I say, this goes a little bit away over my head, but I think the opportunistic toxicity is more about I think things that come about almost by accident in a way um, when research is being done um, to provide the an increase in food um, uh, you know to bulk things out a little bit more to increase production to make our life a little bit easier you know providing chemical based products in our home for cleaning materials, for soap, for shampoo, shaving material, you know, all of these things. Um, I think the opportunistic uh, toxicities are basically something about, you know, mixing chemicals together and scientists not really understanding or production experts and such like not really understanding the effect that mixing those things together can have and the toxicity that they produce. And going back to my first video um, in this series about heavy metal toxicity, there are times where scientists and manufacturers and such like will put things together. Yeah, like an alchemist, they will mix things together to try and get what it is that they want to produce, or the effect that they want to produce, sometimes not knowing that the combination of chemicals that they are putting together uh, are producing a reaction in something else and that may not come in their testing, that may not manifest in you know, the product straight away, but as we know, <laughs> we know that things, you know, when they start corroding, when they start to break up, when they age, sometimes these chemical mixes produce something else. And I think that's my understanding of this toxicity. Again, can we control it? Not really, because we don't really know, you know, we don't really know whether a product in this particular type of plastic, for instance, um, you know, we are being told that this level of plastic is safe. As long as we don't heat it, there's an opportun opportunistic toxicity is that it is possible that by putting water into a bottle in its current state is okay, but putting hot water, for instance, into a bottle produces a chemical reaction that will seep into the water and therefore you are, you know, drinking it. That is an opportunistic, opportunistic toxicity as far as I understand it, um, just as an example. So, Again, you know, what can we do to reduce that risk? I think it's just, again, being aware that these things happen. They are not intended sometimes. Uh, sometimes they're done out of greed, where, you know, toxicity and, and such like, like chemicals being put into rivers, for instance, whereby, you know, a, an authority might say, we accept the levels that, the, these chemicals that you're put, pumping into the water system, you know, are, are manageable. They can be filtered out, you know, when the water is recycled, for instance, and goes through, you know, with the sewage system and, and all the waste water, um, etc. But we don't really know whether that has an effect until further on down the line. We don't really know whether that particular uh, company pumping those chemicals into the water system decides that you know or has an accident then they start pumping things into the water system which are maybe not 
um, part of the agreed toxicity level. Um, you know, so those things are kind of not really within our control. Um, you know, again, I, I always liken it to, I remember um, being on a flight back from Kenya. Um, this is a long time ago. Uh, this is back in the 80s. And they went through, I guess, spraying some form of DTT chemical through the plane just before we took off. Now, in my mind, I'm thinking, well, you know, that's actually quite a strong chemical. And everyone on that flight was breathing that in and potentially breathing that in for the rest of the flight, because obviously the air in the plane is being recycled quite a lot. Um, you know, there's an opportunistic toxicity. Did I have control of it? No, I didn't. Was it necessary? Yes, it probably was because it killed bugs and such like that could have been around. And, <clears throat> you know, I guess the, they were re trying to reduce the risk of things coming from Kenya and going all over the, <laughs> the world, you know, in some sort of bug form, whether that be mosquitoes or flies or bugs or whatever. Um, so, you know, that's something that you have to be, again, I believe that we have to be aware of um, and, and to just manage that in, in the best way that we can and become aware of the effects that that has on us in the short term and in the long term. Um, so anyway, that's all I'm going to say about this. Um, that's my understanding of what an opportunis opportunistic toxicity really is. I have real trouble saying that word, <laughs> but toxicity. Okay, we're going on to the next one.